When people think of the war of the rebellion, it is usually the battlefields that come to mind, or the generals and their large armies. However, those armies only remained in the field because of the all-important supply lines and bases. Especially the Western armies relied on massive supply bases well behind the lines as they marched deeper and deeper into enemy terrain. Those familiar with the Tullahoma Chattanooga campaign know about Fort Rosecrans and Murfreesboro. A similar site existed a short distance from Lexington in Kentucky and Nelson. The sea, as a supply depot, the fort quickly morphed into a contraband camp, which eventually brought about its preservation as Camp Nelson National Monument. came into existence when General Ambrose E. Burnside received orders to take a command consisting of the 9th and 23rd Corps into East Tennessee. On March 25, 1863, Burnside arrived in Kentucky and searched for a suitable location for a supply depot and training center for his troops. He found his site in southern Jessamine County on the north side of the Kentucky River near Hickman Branch, which was part of the Lexington-Danville Turnpike. Burnside was ready for operations by June 3rd, but his 9th Corps was absent, on loan to Ulysses S. Grant at Vicksburg. Burnside only stayed a week, arriving on August 11th and departing on the East Tennessee invasion on August 16th. Despite all the efforts that had gone into Camp Nelson, the supply depot failed from a military perspective. While it stalled raids on Hickman Bridge, the main task was supply Burnside with horses and mules. Many of the animals died of exhaustion as well as lack of food during army operations. The commander at Camp Nelson quickly realized his precarious situation of getting enough food for the animals, not to mention the animals themselves. Despite having a staggering number of animals, the camp had not enough animals for the requisition of the 23rd Corps, which called for 1,500 horses and 800 mules. Even if the commander at Camp Nelson had sufficient supplies to send, he lacked the manpower to transport it, forcing Secretary of War Edwin Stanton to permit the use of Kentucky slaves as Teamsters. The military successes in East Tennessee were remarkable, but the troops soon suffered from significant supply issues, lacking clothing and shoes, as well as food. When Ulysses Grant visited Camp Nelson, he contemplated shutting it down. However, Camp Nelson remained as military needs in eastern Kentucky, and near Cumberland Gap required the supplies Camp Nelson could provide. At the same time, Camp Nelson's claim to fame came from becoming a refugee camp for African-American runaway slaves and being the largest recruitment center in the state for African-Americans. On August 10, 1863, General Order No. 41 had already asked 
for 6,000 laborers to be impressed by US forces to work at Camp Nelson. There was a second call later in the month for 8,000 laborers to construct a rail link to East Tennessee. As a result, Camp Nelson became a massive supply base for those laborers. Recruiting African Americans from Kentucky into the U.S. Army was controversial, and the state legislature protested. By June 1864, any African American appearing at the recruitment station could enlist, regardless whether they were slave or free. The floodgates opened at Camp Nelson. In June 1864, 574 recruits arrived. By the next month, the number had grown to 1,370. The flood receded by winter. Many of them arrived with families that altered the landscape of Camp Nelson. Legally, women and children were not allowed in U.S. military camps, but the issue was frequently ignored. The influx of so many people brought missionaries like John Greg Fee of the American Missionary Association who arrived on July 4, 1864. Upon Fee's urging, two more missionary teachers arrived in August. Sadly, many of the few troops at Camp Nelson did not have time to attend school. Camp Nelson was a difficult terrain, as slave owners frequently came to reclaim their slave property and engage in torturous cruelty. Some masters, threw the family of soldiers out on the street without anything, forcing them to seek shelter at Camp Nelson. Since these enslaved individuals were not counterpanned, U.S. military commanders were unsure what to do with them. Commanders occasionally expelled women and children from camp. Disease took a heavy toll on the families, especially among the children. At the refugee home, which was not without controversy, erected to take care of women and children, there were daily deaths. At the height of the refugee camps' operation, there were thousands of people, hundreds of buildings spread over the 4,000 acres inside the military base. The end of the war ended Camp Nelson's existence. The soldiers departed, and everything the military had constructed had to go. The missionaries and teachers followed suit soon after. The refugees? remain. The Freedmen's Bureau decided to cut rations to force refugees out. There were some who supported the refugees with resettlement. The camp slowly emptied, but some remained and built where the refugee home once stood an academy. John Fee obtained much of the land of Camp Nelson and sold it slowly to African-American families to start a small town. In 1992, when the state planned to run new highways through the area, people became aware of Camp Nelson's historic significance and the need for preservation. Besides the small cemetery, all land was in private hands at the time. Born was the Camp Nelson Restoration and Preservation Foundation, whose goal it was to tell the story of the African Americans and turn 500 acres of Camp Nelson into a park. In 2001, Jasmine County opened the Camp Nelson Civil War Heritage Park to commemorate the site's history. The park included one building, a residence of officers, and five urson fortifications, the powder magazine, and a few other small items. The group had another success when in August 2017, the U.S. Secretary of the Interior suggested turning Camp Nelson Civil War Heritage Park into a national monument. On June 5, 2018, the House of Representatives approved H.R. 5655, Camp Nelson Heritage National Monument Act, but the Senate failed to act on the bill. On October 26, 2018, invoking the Antiquities Act, the President established Camp Nelson National Monument. Much of the landscape of Camp Nelson today resembles what was there before the Civil War. An agricultural environment was fields of tobacco and corn. Sadly, many of the houses of the warriors are gone, but they were considered temporary anyways at the time. It is sad 
that the area where the refugee camp itself was located, next to the refugee home, is not part of the park as there are modern residences in the area. Camp Nelson was an important addition to the National Park Service's portfolio, as it is a powerful and important reminder that the War of the Rebellion was not just fought on a few hundred battlefields, but also tied many thousand soldiers up behind the lines, supplying the combat forces, a vital service. Furthermore, since the creation of the Reconstruction Era National Monument, the National Air Archive has pivoted towards the enslaved and formerly enslaved. Cam Nelson can tell their sad story of hope and abandonment by the U.S. military and Freedom's Bureau, a long-needed narrative that we need to add to the story of the War of the Rebellion era. Thank you for watching this episode of the War of the Rebellion channel. If you liked the material covered, please like and subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell for new episodes. If there's a story of the War of the Rebellion you would like covered, please leave a comment. Use the comments to engage in conversations. Thank you for patronizing the War of the Rebellion channel.